Euh, donc nous accueillons maintenant Sacha Rande, qui va communiquer euh, en anglais, que je vais présenter euh, en anglais euh, aussi. Donc, Kasha Rande is a freelance editor and translator. Um, she's um, based in India, um, and uh, she is the founding trustee of the Pondi Art Foundation, which focuses on building awareness uh, of the issues challenging India through public arts events, including exhibitions, performances, screenings, etc. So in 2014, Kasha Vande was the co-director co of the first edition of the Pondi Photo Festival at Divasi. And she went on to become director for the 2016 edition uh, called Water which included exhibitions by 65 Indian and internationally renowned photographers and 60 public events for 100,000 visitors. Um, the festivals and a number of other events she organized were supported by governors and the government of Pondicherry. In January 2018, in the midst of planning for Women edition of 2019, Bande was la labeled a threat to national security by the Indian Ministry of Home Affairs and blacklisted from India for work in arts and culture. Um, so, uh, Kasha, your, your book, Pondi Photo, a retrospective of an Indian photography festival, uh, was to be published in the early 2020, so uh, you will be able to tell us whether it was published or not. Um, but without not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, so, well, I'm, I'm very happy to um, give you the floor for your presentation uh, entitled Arts in Action in South India, a case study, uh, Pondi Photo Editions 2014 and 2016. So you've already shared your slides, which is great. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we are all here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction and thank you to both you and Nicola for allowing me to, to present on this platform uh, from a slightly different perspective, I think, than most of the other participants. I'm very excited to be here. So, Arts in Action in South India. This is a case study of Pandi Photo 2014 and 2016. The city of Pondicherry, India, sits on the Bay of Bengal, 150 kilometers south of Chennai. Despite its reputation as a quiet coastal city, Pondicherry has an unexpected cosmopolitan air about it. Influenced by complex colonial histories, this old fort town was a center of trade for centuries. In the 1920s, the Sri Aurobindo ashram started actively drawing attention from around the world and the cosmopolitan feel of the city has been further enhanced by the nearby utopian community experiment, Oroville, which draws thousands of national and international visitors each year. Despite this cosmopolitan population, the public art scene in the city has remained focused on South Indian classical form, with traditional dance and music being most common. Galleries are few, and although many artists make Pandi home, their workshops and studios remain private. Modern dance, contemporary music, and theater do exist, but presented in private venues must be sought out. They are less accessible to the general population, either due to lack of publicity, being perceived as socially exclusive, or as ticketed events keep the financially challenged from attending. In Pondicherry, powerful minorities, foreigners, non-Tamil Indians, and Oravillians often consider the majority population of Tamils as lacking in artistic curiosity. This has created a very real cleavage between those deemed entitled with the cultural capital to produce and appreciate contemporary art and the others. 
Within many of the networks I engaged with at the time, it was frequently reiterated that the general public was unable to comprehend the work of professional artists, much less interested by it. These are my personal observations made between 2002 and 2012 while living and working in the city. It should be noted that they are generalizations. However, speaking broadly, public access to the contemporary arts was essentially non-existent in Pondicherry. In late 2012, I began an initiative under the name Pondi Art to counter the situation. Pondi Art was to promote existing private galleries while also creating new public gallery spaces showing internationally recognized artists. For the latter, Srikanth Kolari, an Indian documentary photographer, suggested a street exhibition as a means not only of sharing his artistic work, but also of building public awareness of the story behind it. Subsequently, a strategically positioned wall was borrowed and a series of photographs pasted to its surface. Global sex trafficking was hung along a main axis of the city where thousands walked, cycled and drove past it daily. While hanging this first exhibition, one cyclist stopped and after careful study of the images, approached the photographer and kissed his hand, thanking him for sharing the story, one by which a member of his family was directly affected. Public response to this public gallery and awareness building artwork was overwhelmingly positive. Pondi Art caught a glimpse of its future. Pondi Art's next exhibition was printed at a larger scale with text and captions in three languages to increase public accessibility. This second art and social awareness exhibition received coverage in local papers. The Pondi Art Photo Wall Project gained attention, generating increased community and financial support. For the third exhibition, permission was obtained to use a prominent wall on the beach road. The beach road is a popular evening promenade for both residents and visitors and is designated pedestrian only after 6 p.m. Pondi Art jumped at the chance for a wall in such a location. Photographic portraits of the rapidly disappearing Hindu sect, the Ramnamis, and associated information, informational captions were custom sized for the 60 running meters of wall. The visual impact of the photographs by French photographer Yannick Cormier was attention grabbing and passing traffic stopped, looked and read about this community in the north of India. Press attention increased and public awareness of the project grew. At this point, Pondi Art stumbled onto a Pondicherry government sponsored set of statistics. This was the moment when Pondi Art first gauged the reach and potential impact of the initiative. Statistics stated that an estimated 200,000 pedestrians visited the beach road in any given month. Pondi Art added a mission to offer an alternative means of public education to its focus on making art publicly accessible. The third show represented another turning point for Pondi Art. Cormier shared his enthusiasm for the project with his extensive professional network and curated the next few months of exhibitions. By October 2013, Pondi Art had shared awareness building exhibitions by photographers, seven Indian and one French, with more than 1.2 million people of mixed background and ethnicity. Some of these ex uh, exhibitions were simply building awareness of communities and festivals in other regions of India, and so were easy to curate and hang. However, the shows on environmental pollution and the nuclear power dilemma were potentially controversial and therefore more challenging. It was important to me that if we address these kinds of issues, it should be in collaboration with an Indian artist, activist, rather than with an outsider who might be labeled judgmental. To minimize controversy on the pollution exhibition, I worked together with a photographer to ensure the text and captions were clearly journalistic in style, avoiding subjective criticism. For the show on the Kudankulam nuclear power project to be less activist in nature, we hung the show without any text or captions, although that did little to minimize the impact of images 
which left no room for misinterpretation. Self-censorship was not always successful. As I was fixing a print one day, an Indian pedestrian stopped in front of the exhibition and loudly commented, these foreigners are always criticizing India. They should be showing its beauty only. I suggested that he take note that the work was created by an Indian artist, not a foreigner, and that the photographer was clear that India's beauty was being marred, but the man refused to look further and walked away. On another day, when I introduced myself to a government official, his first comment was, oh, it's you who hung that exhibition on Kuran Kulam. We all wondered who would be crazy enough to do that on the beach road. As our search for a more permanent location continued, in November 2013, the United Union Territories government unexpectedly stepped up. The long unused old distillery at the north end of the beach road was made available to Pandi Art by the Department of Tourism. It was our first interaction with government. The three acre Iraq factory was composed of a series of dilapidated concrete and steel structures and had lain mostly vacant for around two decades. The government gave the space freely, but offered no support in terms of utilities, general maintenance, security, or public safety. When Pandi Art took over the site in January 2014, for solo shows, we simply blocked off 90% of the area. However, as we began to prepare for what was to become the first edition of the Pondi Photo Photography Festival, site improvements for public safety were completed in addition to the planning and installation of the festival. In preparing the seven exhibitions of Adivasi, tribals of the Indian subcontinent, we were again careful to avoid controversy. Padma Shri and World Press prize-winning photographer, Pablo Bartholomew, removed his favorite image of the Naga series, a portrait of bare-breasted tribal women in traditional headdresses and jewelry, just in case. We screened every photo caption to avoid any direct criticism of the government, although the facts presented often revealed by whom the Arivasi in question were being threatened. We knew we were walking a thin line in our choice of theme, given the discrimination and actions Adivasi were subject to by some of the powers that be, but also believed that the tangible and intangible heritage tribal communities represent deserved attention, increased awareness, and preservation. Lieutenant Governor Verenda Kataria opened Pondi Photo in March 2014 in this defunct factory, reinvented into a public center of arts and education, stating that according to what he saw in front of him, Pondi Art would never have trouble getting support for a project again. Everywhere one looked, there were photographs accompanied by information about a tribal way of life, costume, tradition, or regional context. In the weeks following, workshops, presentations, panel discussions, and performances took place. Schools sent students for guided tours. Public response to the reinvented space, the art, the subject, and the associated events was overwhelmingly positive, and we watched social barriers disappear as visitors of all backgrounds and ages interacted with the exhibitions and each other. The press took notice on national and international levels and visibility of the project soared thanks to sharing on social networks. Unfortunately, public approval of a project does not guarantee success in other areas. The Lieutenant Governor, in complete negation of his earlier proclamation, reneged on the government's pledged funding, requiring the shutting down of generators and leaving the festival costs uncovered. Fortunately, pride in participating in the project made unpaid contractors lenient and the community pride generated generated, transformed itself into donations, helping me pay off the festival bills by the end of the year. Despite the challenges, the first two years of Pondi Art's effort to reinterpret public spaces into catalysts for the arts and education yielded significant successes, enabling clarification of the organization's mission and methods. 
new business and professional relationships built during the festival held strong and the news media directed attention to Pondicherry's burgeoning public art scene, which helped make it easier to lobby for additional support. The photography world had also taken notice and Pondy Arts Network expanded, bringing access to new work, new collaborations, and new ideas to draw from as it moved forward. Meanwhile, Pondy Art needed to shift into a more stable structure and following a year of extensive research to determine how this could be best achieved without my involvement as a foreigner jeopardizing the organization's future, the Pondy Art Initiative was officially registered as a foundation on the 1st of April, 2016 with myself and two Indians, photographer Bartholomew and businessman Thomas Sherian as trustees. It was just in time as planning for the second edition of Pondy Photo was already underway. Festival organization involved a great deal more effort for this edition and the team grew significantly to include among others, a specialist in water management and environmental science, whose knowledge of global water issues and experience working with associations was to be a crucial element in this effectiveness with which the festival addressed the theme. To enhance artistic content and create a support system for the administration team, a board of advisors was put in place. In addition, a London-based curator was invited to create a feature exhibition by internationally recognized photographers to increase awareness of the project and of the festival on a global level. For this edition, Pondy Art approached the multiple government departments involved to request access to the Old Port, a five acre site at the south end of the beach road. Water being the theme and title of this edition, the waterfront complex was perfect. The larger site with its empty warehouses lent itself to the increased scope of the festival designed to expand on the Pondy Art Foundation's now formalized mission to build awareness through the arts and thereby initiate change at grassroots levels. As the festival neared, 25 local government departments were approached for support, which required innumerable hours of waiting in offices for short and often frustrating interactions. Fundraising was carried out at local and national levels but Pondicherry did not represent a significant enough market share, and the water issue appeared controversial for some reason, frustrating our efforts. Nonetheless, we forged ahead, believing the project merited the effort and that funding would eventually appear for the 16-day program that now included work by over 60 photographers and artists and 60 associated events. Alongside the photography-oriented workshops and symposia, a youth outreach program was introduced to culminate in a designated youth day. Environmental associations from across the country were approached to provide photographic, sorry, photographic documentation of their efforts on the water issue. A water-focused film series of documentary and feature films was added to the program. At the local level, we engaged with grassroots changemakers to initiate dialogue on the needs being addressed in and around Pondicherry. Finally, music, dance, and theater performances were curated to reflect the water theme. Our goal was to offer an enticing program, drawing people from different backgrounds and different age groups, enabling them to engage with the theme and almost without realizing it, achieve a greater awareness of the local, national, and global issues associated with water. Site work began. Although not in the condition of the distillery, the five acre port still required extensive cleaning and preparation for safe public access. It took our contractors four weeks, working 18 hours a day to prepare that venue and to hang the 6,500 square meters of prints which showcased contemporary art, nature, and documentary photographer on water photography on water-related themes, such as a self-portrait series, I Was Not Waving But Drowning, The Sinking Sunderbun Islands, the 2015 floods of Chennai, 
and salt and freshwater wildlife. National and international emerging and established photographers were represented. Water opened to the public on the 26th of August, 2016. Now it was the port which it had transformed into a public center of arts and education. Water drew an estimated 100,000 visitors from the region, the country, and further afield. Events were well attended and many visitors made return visits because there was so much to see and do. When Pandi Photo 2016 closed on the 11th of September, the team was exhausted but exuberant. Everyone was asking when we would do it again. And although we had just or barely finished the second edition, the excitement and interest in the festival on the national and international level effectively forced me to begin dialogue on the third edition, Woman, without taking a break. However, given the scale of what the festival now represented as an event, it was important to review, uh, sorry, it was important to review Fondi Art's activities thus far and consider how future editions could be better organized and even more effective. Thanks to a survey carried out during the festival by IFP researchers, it was possible to take measure of a number of aspects involved. Among several areas needing improvement was the distinct lack of government visibility at water in contrast to Adivasi, although interaction with that sector during the planning period had definitely increased awareness of the event. The issue was a pertinent one given Pondicherry's challenge beaches, waterways, farmland, and general access to clean water, and given public support and press coverage for the event for the event, it was surprising that government representatives were not curious about the project their departments had helped fund. No government VIPs made themselves available to attend the opening of the festival, and only one prominent bureaucrat came to see it. As director, my goal was to create an inclusive event for the public, and I chose not to follow long established VIP protocols to ensure ministers and officials would attend, feeling that the special attention given them would be exclusive for others. This lack of official visitors was due to my own insufficient effort to follow due process and stands, stands as an example for what must be taken into account for an Indian public event to be truly inclusive. As a case study, the two editions of the festival offered cautions, but also encouragement. We had successfully met or exceeded partner and audience expectations in terms of content, presentation, programming, and fund management while remaining within budget. In addition, the festival's simple mission of building awareness through the arts successfully augmented the cultural life experience of festival visitors and individuals were given access to information, enabling them to become proactive as change makers at grassroots levels. Furthermore, Pondi Art activities were effectively socially inclusive, positioned in sites undefined by previous use or a particular history of ownership, or that were already clearly identifiable public spaces there were no physical or psychological barriers for entry for individuals from any economic background. The mix of program elements, all free of charge, enhanced this by drawing different audiences together for different reasons in the same space. Most importantly, the festivals proved that photography and other art forms can build awareness of an issue and draw varied audiences effectively. While visitors learned more about festival themes, they gained exposure to international standard art forms. They were informed, but also entertained. Sensitive right relationship management had proved successful as well. Promoting a shared ownership reinforced pride in the project and in what it represented in terms of a contribution to the community. For example, Contractors and suppliers remained loyal to and increasingly supportive of the project over time, not only helpful to the organizers on the practical level, but in fact also making them super spreaders of information. 
as they learned more about the art and issues individually, they urged, urged their own social networks to the site to look and learn with them. As a case study of arts in action, the challenges Pondi Art faced presenting art and building awareness in public space in Pondicherry are representative of what all organizations doing similar work face globally and suggest that the successes achieved in the face of these challenges absolutely outweigh the difficulties and immense work involved. I say this despite the fact that since January 2018, Pondi Art has been unable to present any new events, and Woman, Pondi Photo 2019, was unfortunately canceled despite um, conversations going on with the government to rehabilitate the port as a permanent cultural venue. On January 5th, 2018, I was refused entry to India and blacklisted for my activities with Pondi Art and Pondi Photo. This fact represents my final and most personally challenging insight into the potential power of the arts. In the case of Pondi Photo, combining arts and action was apparently working too well for a government threatened by activism. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kesha, for sharing the history of that wonderful festival. I'm um, very sad to hear about um, its uh, its ending, in fact. Uh, I hope it takes another four 